Good to see you and be with each of you in God's uh, house. And for those who, who will view and see it at home or wherever you are, we pray the Lord's richest blessings upon you. Our service for uh, today is our blended service, so everything will be projected on the uh, screen for you. It is for the transfiguration of our Lord. Before we begin our service, let's take a moment. Would you just stand up and turn around or turn to wherever you see some people and just say hello and uh, good afternoon and God's peace be with you. God's peace be with each of you. Good to see you guys. Good to be with you. Our opening hymn is God of Wonders. May God bless our worship. Heavens are your tabernacle. 
as you're able, we rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Exalt the Lord our God, and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. The Lord reigns. Let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. The king in his might loves justice. You have established equity. You have ex executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy may be seated as we sing that's why we praise him
Lord be with you. We pray. We pray together in unison our prayer. O oh God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in his glory and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament read for the transfiguration of our Lord is from 2 Kings chapter 2, beginning with the first verse. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he said, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. Elijah said to him, Elisha, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he answered, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. And Elijah said to him, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the sons of the prophets also went and stood at some distance from them. And as they both were standing by the Jordan, then Elijah took his cloak and rolled it up and struck the water. And the water was parted to the one side and the other till the two of them could go over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, Please let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. And he said, You've asked a hard thing. Yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And as they still went on and talked, Behold, chariots of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them in two, two pieces. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from 2 Corinthians chapters 3 and 4. Since we, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. Not like Moses who would put a veil over his face so that the Israels might not, Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. Therefore, having this ministry... By the mercy of God, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled only to those who are perishing. In their case, 
the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of the darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing our hymn, Ancient Words. to the read the Holy Gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. This also serves as our text for today's message. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became radiant, intensely white, as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we're here. Let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. And suddenly looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them but Jesus, Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith according to the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Christian, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. It's good to be with you today. It feels good inside, doesn't it? Outside, it's a little bit on the chilly side. Inside, it feels nice. And it's always wonderful to be in God's house. Well, I've got something to show you. Would you go on to the next slide, please, David? Does that look familiar to any of you? Any of you ever played? Yep, you got thumbs up out there. I think our boys played with that quite a bit, too. You know, if you look at the canisters, if you look at those Play-Doh, it doesn't really look like much, really, when you look at it. It's just there, there, and you open it up, and it just looks like a lump. But you know what? For some people, not necessarily myself, but some people who are creative, you can do some pretty amazing things. I should ask Josiah, you're pretty, have you made some? A little bit, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I bet you have. Well, let's go on. I thought I'd show you. Here's some things that they made. Can you believe that came out of those canisters right there? And how they changed that lump into, well, it looks like a starfish up there and a fish. And a giraffe, I kind of like that one. And also with the, the Earth and the spaceship and the stars and the sky, pretty awesome how that could be changed like that. You know, when I think about that, that makes me think about today. Today, as we remember, is a pretty amazing event with Jesus taking Peter, James, and John up in on the mountain. And there up there, he is transfigured, which means he's changed. Now go on to the next one. Before then they saw Jesus, and Jesus just looked like us, a normal human being, though he spoke with authority and power, and he healed, but from his outward appearance, he just looked like one of us, just like you and me. But then on the mountain, something happened. Would you go on to the next one? All of a sudden, his light, his clothes, and his skin, and everything, he looked like bright as white, and there... He changed. And they saw he was much more than just a man. He was, well, God. And the disciples, well, you have Peter and James and John in the front, and, well, Moses and Elijah are there, and they're overwhelmed, and they're terrified and amazed at what's going on. And all of a sudden then, Peter starts speaking. And he says, let's make some tents and let's stay up here. And then there's a cloud. And go back to the next one, would you? Jesus. Jesus only, we see. And he showed his glory, who he was there, but here we're going to see it a little bit as he comes down from the mountain in a greater way, in the cross where he pays for our sins, and then he rose from the grave, that we might be changed, that we might have life and forgiveness and peace with God. And go on to the next one, would you please? Apply to us in our baptism, where we are changed and made children of God. And when we hear his word, as he works on our hearts and the spirit changes our lives, that we might reflect his love. 
and in his holy supper when we are able to partake of that where he strengthens us in faith and life we're changed by Jesus our risen Lord not just that we might be changed but that that light might shine through us too to everyone and may God help us do that we pray gracious Lord we thank you and praise you we thank you for your not only showing your glory on that mountain but most importantly showing forth your glory and giving us your love in the greatest way in the cross and through the empty tomb help us O Lord that we might ever not only know that love and know that we've been changed forgiven and restored but that we also may reflect that love and show it to the world that they might know it too in Jesus name we pray we sing our sermon hymn, which is unwavering.
God's grace and peace be multiplied unto each of you today from God our Father and from our risen Savior, Jesus. Amen. Our text for today's message is the gospel reading read a few moments ago. Please join with me in a word of prayer. We pray. Gracious Lord, we pray that you bless us as we hear your word and ever be assured of the life and light that is ours through you, Jesus. May we ever listen to you and fix our hearts on eyes on you, you who are the author and perfecter of our faith. I pray now that the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, may they ever be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus, our Savior's name, we pray. Amen. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, change. Man, when you think about it, we have seen a lot of change or changes happen in our lives and in our world. I am now, I have to confess, 53 years old, and our boys are out of school. And I tell you what, I look back at pictures of them, and I can't believe how they have changed. And I guess as I look at pictures of ourselves and myself, I must say, how much change has happened and occurred during that time? How we've changed and grown and, well, look a little bit different along the way. Technology, you think about that. I remember going through college, I had a typewriter, a Canon Type Star typewriter. Some, I, some of you may understand what that is what a typewriter is, and with a digital one-line screen in which you typed your papers out. And then when I proceeded to go to seminary, I had my first computer. My first computer had a whopping 20 megabyte hard drive. And I was told that that would last me, well, pretty much forever. Huh, how that changed. Boy, oh boy, when you think about that technology. Morals and things in our nation, the things that we've seen, oh, how much they've changed, haven't they? In this last year, we've seen a lot of change, haven't we? Man, who would have thought a year ago that we would be looking at people out in the pews with masks on their faces and we'd be wearing that too and have the concern of the pandemic and all the concerns that it brings and with peace in our nation, changes, lots of changes going on. Sometimes changes are good, sometimes bad, and sometimes it's hard to know the perspective, at least at this time, until later in history. I guess one thing in the pandemic that the change that I guess has been a good thing I can definitely see is it has caused us as God's people, not just here at St. Peter's, but as a church to get the message out in a different way and more. I don't think we would have thought of going on Facebook and YouTube and getting the message out if it wasn't for this. And for that, I guess for that change, we can give thanks. Change. Well, today we read about Jesus transfiguring, changing before them, at least in his appearance before the disciples on that mountain. And it was a change that was full of meaning. And as the three disciples, they saw it, they didn't comprehend what was happening and what was all about until they looked back later on it after Jesus' resurrection. I think in some ways this Sunday or this weekend with the transfiguration, it's kind of hard, it's kind of fuzzy as we try to understand what happened up there. We think and can understand things more like being born and living and preaching and even dying and even the miraculous things by faith we can think of Jesus miracles and even rising from the dead while requiring our faith the Holy Spirit it's still in a sense maybe easier to understand so what is the significance of this time on the mountain this experience and what does it mean for you and for me today and for our faith and our walk with the Lord? What is this glory that they beheld up on the mountain? Well, the transfiguration takes six days after Peter confessed that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
And it, in a sense, signals the end of, perhaps you might say, smoother sailing in his ministry. And after he comes down from the mountain, it's a beginning of time of opposition that will, well, it will climax at the cross and then the empty tomb. And if Epiphany is a season about revealing who Jesus is, then the transfiguration demonstrates in a powerful way that this is God's son and that we are to listen to him. It's Jesus giving those disciples and us a glimpse behind the veil into the glory that is Jesus by rights, being God and man in the flesh. Peter said he was the Christ, and here Peter and here we have a peek with what that means, our Savior and King. Furthermore, we have Moses and Elijah who appear. Moses, the lawgiver, given the Ten Commandments, and Elijah, the great prophet. These are the two great men of the Old Testament. And now it's kind of like Mount Rushmore. Here you got these three figures up there, important men on a mountain. And that wonderful light shining through Jesus as it's revealed. Moses and Elijah represent Moses, the law and the prophets, the entire Old Testament, and their presence speaks volumes as they appear. Now, if you imagine if after church today, we're going home and we find that our next door neighbor all of a sudden comes up in a fancy car, the governor of the state. And then a little while later comes in the president of the United States and visits our neighbor you might conclude that your neighbor, well, he must be someone important. Well, when Moses and Elijah appear with Jesus, their presence testifies to his importance. But more than that, they are there to say, this Jesus, this is the one we were pointing to. We were waiting for. We were looking to coming. He is the one who fulfills all scripture, the Old Testament. He is the one who is sent to save you and save all from sin. It's supposed to have been overwhelming for the disciples to see that. Stunned and awe, terrified, James and John are silent. Peter, as Peter usually likes to do, he likes to talk. And even though he doesn't know what he's saying, he starts talking like he likes to. And he speaks about building tents and figures that this event will last as long as possible as we stay up on the mountain. Because after all, how often is it really that you... And then the cloud. And we hear a voice of authority, the Heavenly Father who says, a word of instruction that's clear and true. God the Father unmistakably gets straight to the point. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Peter, stop your talking. You need to listen. And so do we. Stop your planning and your own ideas and pay attention. Listen up. This isn't just some prophet. It's not even really just, just a really great and important man. This is my son. My son. Listen to him. And just as suddenly the cloud is gone, and so are Moses and Elijah, the disciples left looking around. Where did everyone go? What happened? And they saw only Jesus. Jesus only. That's something we can hold on to. That's something we can sink our teeth into. Jesus only. Not anyone else. God didn't say... Listen to Jesus and also pay attention. 
to all the philosophies that are out there in the world. He didn't say, listen to him along with Muhammad and Buddha and the Dalai Lama. He didn't say, make sure you balance your spirituality with opinions from different sources and perspectives. Because doesn't it seem everyone has something to bring to the table? No, he said, listen to Jesus. Jesus only. You see, when it comes to your and mine, the world's salvation, there's only Jesus and Jesus only. Even St. Paul echoes that in Galatians. He says, if anyone preaches to you a different gospel, a different message, anything other than salvation through Jesus Christ, through faith in him alone, and I don't care whether it's a, myself or another preacher or an apostle, or he speaks of even an angel disguised in white. If anyone tries to lead you astray with these lies, let him be condemned. In fact, he says, let him be cursed to hell. Strong words, weren't they? from Paul, and we should think the same. When it comes to salvation, there's only one saving gospel, one saving message, and that gospel, that message is about Jesus, and Jesus only. Only Jesus lived a perfect life in our place. Only Jesus died a perfect death for us that we might be forgiven and restored. Only his death on the cross where the sins of the world and ours offers forgiveness and life to you and to me. And only Jesus' resurrection from the dead predicted beforehand and fulfilled assures us of life now and eternal. Only Jesus can get us right with the Father, with God. And only Jesus can give us God's grace and mercy. Only in Jesus' name are our prayers acceptable before the Heavenly Father. And only Jesus feeds us in his Holy Supper, in, with, and under the bread and wine for the forgiveness of sins, his body and blood. Only Jesus, as he is applied to us and what he won for us in our baptism, are we forgiven and cleansed and clothed with his righteousness and made his very own. Only Jesus is the living word who continues to work by his spirit in the written, read, and spoken word. Only Jesus. Jesus only. Hebrews 12 says it beautifully. He says, fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And for us and for all sinners needing salvation, there really is nowhere else to look. But looking to him by his power, we can be sure he is who he says he is and that he did what he said he would do through his cross and empty tomb. And he will do what he promises even now for us and his people, for each of us who by his power trust in him and him alone. For if we trust in ourselves or our works or anything else, if we look within ourselves or elsewhere, we have no assurance, no lasting hope. But in Jesus, only do we have living hope. And in only him do we rest secure and know the peace that only he can bring. Today, in a sense, as we hear his word and we remember the transfiguration, as we come or hear his word wherever we may be, and we bring with us all the things that weigh us down, our sins, our shame, our struggles, our failings, our hurts, the things that weigh us down not only now but on each day, wherever we are. As we're in his presence, worshiping him, something's different. Something happens. We see, in a sense, the prophets of old, and we hear the voice. We're awestruck by the bright, shining glory of Jesus. 
and something does happen. Here with Jesus, we're transfigured, we're changed. In Jesus, we're changed, we're forgiven, we're renewed, we're cleansed, we're a new creation in Christ. In Jesus, we hear the voice of God and we know the word of God and we see the love of God for us and for all people. And in Jesus' body and blood, when we partake of it, we receive it for forgiveness and strengthening of faith. And in Jesus, we leave with the assurance that our sins are removed or forgiven and we're restored. And our life is secure in him and through him alone, no matter what's going on. What glory we behold in Jesus, in Jesus only. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in the true faith unto life everlasting through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our offertory hymn, and at this time, which is Shine, Jesus, Shine, the offerings brought forward, please. As you're able, we rise at this time as for prayer. We pray that the light of the glory of Christ will shine in the world, the church, and for all those in need. We pray. We pray, O Lord, that the rulers of the world, and especially this country, be granted wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and that they may lead by your wisdom and glory too. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, we pray that all who make and enforce the laws would be, do so with integrity and honor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That all who protect us from our enemies, especially the armed forces, the police and firefighters, may be preserved from all harm. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That all who plan evil may be frustrated in their ways. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That all who teach the children, especially in our Lutheran preschools and day schools, and especially as we remember St. Peter's Lutheran School, in high schools, colleges, and seminaries, would do so with patience and creativity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That our children, especially the unborn, would be preserved from all harm and danger. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy that those who live in darkness may be drawn to the light of Christ and brought to faith. 
let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we would be wise stewards of all the gifts entrusted to our care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we, the members of Christ church and this congregation, may be generous and have compassion, compassionate hearts for the poor and needy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the leaders of our church body be faithful to the Lord in his word and have courage to resist temptation and manipulation and pressure and fear of man. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we who have been baptized into Christ may reflect his glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That all who commune at this altar today may approach with faith in the words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That all those who are ill or in need of your healing, blessing, strength, and care may receive your care. We especially remember Gil Schultz, Don Hall, Bob Norwell, Larry Novak, Ivelis Rawling, Mary Schwenkoff, Louise Lang, Vicki Gerke, Roger Hansen, Emily Rogers, Margaret Kruger, as well as those affected by the virus, including the people of Garden Hill, Manitoba, and all the health care and emergency workers caring for the sick. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That you, O Holy Spirit, who have led Michaela Willoughby to decline our designation and call, would grant us a kindergarten teacher in your time. We pray that you bless Michaela as she continues to search where you would have her serve in your kingdom. And as we search and look for the one whom you desire to serve and work in your kingdom here, we pray that your will may be done. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That all who grieve may look forward with sure and certain faith to the resurrection of the saints of God and life everlasting. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That all who are isolated from family and friends may find comfort in the fellowship of saints, in your people, and in your word, and in the living hope that is ours through you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on night which he's betrayed, took bread, and when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper, and when he given thanks, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is New Testament of my blood, which was shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as oft as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please be seated as we sing the Agnus Dei as well as the distribution. The hymns of distribution. very body of Christ given unto death for you.
only this true body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve each of you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in his peace with great joy. Amen. As you're able, we rise for the prayer, our collect and benediction. We pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our closing hymn, This is Amazing Grace. Once again, good to be with each of you in God's house and be able to be able to see you wherever you are. We pray the Lord's richest blessings. 
Just a couple announcements to remind you, this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, Lent begins, and we have one service this year, uh, and it is uh, at 7 p.m. in person, uh, and hope you can come and join us for that, along with the Lord's Supper, will be offered for that service, as well as tomorrow again, we have our Bible study after the 10.30 service, and after the 10.30, after the 9 o'clock service, as well as 1.30 on Tuesday is our Bible study as well. Uh, Josiah, did you have anything you'd like to share? Not today. Uh, we have Red Letter Challenge. If anybody, adult, is still interested in that, speak to me. We have a couple people interested in that. And uh, we pray the Lord's richest blessings upon your day and week ahead. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain.